So you're a student in class. You have this big economics test you're studying for. Finally, the day comes, you take your seat, look at your test, and the first question is, what backs the US dollar? Well, how do you answer that? Do you write gold? Do you write that nothing backs the US dollar? Or do you write the US government or faith in the US government? That in America, we're all created equal. Well, if you chose any of those answers, you'd actually be incorrect. You probably didn't know it, but the right answer is only one man backs the US dollar. Yes, you heard me right. Just one man. Well, how could that be? How could an entire globally recognized currency be held up by just one man? Well, that man just so happens to have the entire US military wrapped around his finger, supplying him with military protection and billions of dollars worth of weapons. Any final guesses? His name is Mohammed bin Salman, and he is the one man who could kill the US dollar. Some people even think he's the most powerful millennial in the world. That's right, he's only a millennial, only 37 years old. He's also the Prince of Saudi Arabia, the second largest producer of oil in the world right behind America. But right now, his choices could lead to a serious conflict and potentially the fallout of the US dollar. Now, before I tell you his plans, let me tell you how we got here. Centuries ago, civilizations thrived on the use of gold and precious metal coins as a form of payment. Bartering for goods and services was finally a thing of the past, and it was that small leap for society that would birth growing economies all around the world. The use of precious metal as coins allowed people to easily pay for goods and services. No longer was there a need to move your cows across town in exchange for food. Just coins in your pocket would suffice. Although even with this improved bartering system, there were still problems. Gold coins are heavy, and they are also easy to steal. It was it wasn't until the 17th century where we saw the first development in banks and paper money. Goldsmiths in London developed facilities to store gold and silver deposits in safety, which was a necessity to keep their gold from getting stolen. Eventually, they started holding on to their clients' gold for the same reasons. The goldsmiths created a system for maintaining a running account of each of their clients' holdings. They also created a profitable business loaning out their clients' gold, silver, and coins to the government and private customers. Customers. To meet the demands from borrowers, goldsmiths actually turned on paying interest on deposits and offering time deposits as well. Now, the paperwork and record keeping of these activities laid the foundation for important innovations in banking. The banknote, or what we call now paper money, evolved out of the receipts for deposits at goldsmiths. And it wasn't until the 1830s that the United States officially adopted gold as a means of payment, uh, the gold de facto. By 1913, the gold standard was built into the framework for the creation of the Federal Reserve. The Gold Standard Act of 1900 established gold as the only metal for redeeming paper currency in the United States. The act guaranteed that the government would redeem any amount of paper money for its value in gold, and it meant that transactions no longer had to be done with heavy gold bullion or coins because paper currency had a guaranteed value tied to something real. Unfortunately, this system didn't last that long and was actually challenged just two decades later in 1933. The US was temporarily off the gold standard. Franklin D. Roosevelt, the president at the time, had seriously hurt the economy. He soon realized he couldn't print enough money to keep up with his spending and all of his new policies. Scared Americans rushed to the banks to take back their gold. This became a major problem for the feds, as for every dollar printed, it had to be backed by 40% gold, which they were quickly running out of. FDR needed to separate gold from the dollar in order to save the economy, by printing more money, or so he thought. FDR running out of options made it illegal to own gold. Yes, most of you probably didn't know, but at one point you could be arrested for having gold. FDR required all Americans to turn their gold into the Federal Reserve in exchange for paper money. Anyone caught with gold would have to pay a fine twice the amount of gold that was not turned over to the Federal Reserve. And any Americans who did not turn in their gold was subject to arrest on criminal charges and faced up to 10 years in federal 
prison. Long story short, FDR's plan didn't really work and the stock market collapsed a few years later. But even though this system wasn't working here in the US, it was still holding up in foreign countries. Something called the Bretton Woods Agreement was negotiated in 1944 under the Bretton Woods system. Gold was the basis for the US dollar and other currencies were pegged to the US dollar's value. The Bretton Woods system effectively came to an end in the early 1970s when President Richard M. Nixon announced that the US would no longer exchange gold for US currency. The end of the gold standard gave birth to what is known today as the petrodollar. The petrodollar, which isn't a physical, tangible thing, is how crude oil exports are calculated to the world. Saudi Arabia was quickly becoming the largest oil producer in the world at the time. Oil is really what runs a country and its military. It's what powers tanks and guns and weapons and missiles. It's the most valuable resource in the world. Now, the US knew it needed to get involved with Saudi Arabia's oil before any other country did. In 1973, the petrodollar system was created through a deal between the US and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia would only accept US dollars in exchange for oil, and in return, the US would supply them with military protection and billions of dollars worth of weapons. By 1975, Saudi imports of US military equipment had risen from $300 million to more than $5 billion in just a few years alone. With the two countries finally united, oil became standardized in terms of dollars. Any country that purchased oil from Saudi Arabia would have to use US dollars. If they challenged this agreement or tried accepting any other currency as payment, they would feel the wrath of the United States military. This thought alone actually led many other oil producing countries to also standardize oil prices in US dollars. The power this gave to the US was like no other that we've ever experienced. Billions of dollars would now have to be used by foreign countries. This not only rallied the US economy, but also allowed the price of oil to stabilize over the past 50 years. But in recent times, it seems the US's power might be running out. And it appears that just one man could be responsible for it all. As we said earlier, his name is Mohammed bin Salman al Saud, and he is the current prince of Saudi Arabia. Unlike the US, Saudi Arabia is not a democracy. It's an absolute monarchy. That means it is ruled by one person and one person alone, usually a king. Even though Mohammed isn't a king yet, he has been the kingdom's ruler for several years now. You see, all the kings in Saudi Arabia have been from the same royal family, currently called the Saud. And to this day, the Saudi Arabia's ruling royal family has a net worth of about 1.4 trillion dollars. This is 16 times more than that of the British royal family, making them the wealthiest family in the world, all thanks to their abundant supply of oil. And here's where things start to get interesting. As of a few months ago, there has been reports that Saudi Arabia is considering the possibility of accepting the yuan, the Chinese national currency, instead of the US dollar for oil sales. If Mohammed, the prince of Saudi Arabia, was to approve this agreement, it would be a devastating blow to the US economy and the value of the dollar. Oil, you see, is what gives the US dollar its value. It's truly what is backing it besides the US military. Now take away the petrodollar and instead create a petro yuan and watch the US dollar crumble. Just on the rumor alone that this could be happening, the yuan surged in value quite a bit. And to make matters worse, the US hasn't really been on the best terms with Saudi Arabia in recent years either. Prince Mohammed bin Salman initially put forth a public image as a reformer to the world, liberalizing the country's policies on women's rights and criminal justice. However, the 2018 assassination of a reporter has been catastrophic for both the prince's reputation and relations with the US. The rift intensified after our president, our current president, made negative comments about it and pretty much tarnished uh, the prince's reputation. And on top of that, the Saudis are even more angry over the US's lack of support for their intervention in the Yemen civil war, which most of you probably haven't heard about. It's the world's largest humanitarian crisis, by the way, that's been going on currently today for the past seven years. And to top it all off, Saudis are even more mad with the Biden administration's attempt to strike a deal with Iran over its nuclear power. And currently, Iran is who is battling Yemen from the left, and Saudi Arabia is who's helping Yemen on the right, including the United Arab Emirates. You see, Saudi officials even said that they were shocked 
sparked by the US's withdrawal from Afghanistan last year. In potential retaliation, Saudi Arabia has decided to cut oil production, pulling 2 million barrels a day out of the open market right before the midterm elections were starting to see. Whether this was political or not to strike back at the US, you know, is up for debate. But what we do know is that it will have a devastating effect on the US inflation at the time that needs cheap oil the most and was most likely the culprit for why we're starting to see gas kind of come back up in price. Now, this conflict between the US and Saudi Arabia gave China the perfect opportunity to weasel in a stronger relationship with the Saudis. And in recent years, China has helped Saudi Arabia build its own ballistic missiles, consulted a nuclear program, and began investing in Mohammed bin Salman's pet projects like the Neom, which is the futuristic new city Saudi Arabia is trying to build. Now, if Saudi Arabia were to accept China's currency as the new petrodollar, that same domino effect would likely happen with the Yuan as it did with the US dollar. Countries like Russia and Iraq would also accept the Yuan instead of the US dollar. And the US dollar would also weaken and could even get overthrown by the Yuan as the new world reserve currency. Now, it's hard to say whether or not this will happen, but this is the closest we've gotten so far in quite a few years. And the last country to try to overthrow the petrodollar was Iraq, and they actually got invaded for it. So who knows how the US plans to react to Saudi Arabia and China for trying or potentially attempting to overthrow the petrodollar. Only time will tell. The only thing we can do now is hope the US can retain the relationship with Saudi Arabia, which we are slightly beginning to see. Now, just a few weeks ago, the US, as of August 3rd, gave Saudi Arabia another $5 billion in weapons to help protect them against Iran if need be, which is the opposite of what our new president was trying to do in the beginning of his term. So he is double backing on his words. And from my understanding, defaming a certain person or country and then asking them for help doesn't usually go that well as we're starting to see. The key takeaway that we really need to think about is what would we do if the US dollar was to actually collapse? And this isn't financial advice, but me personally being faced with this thought, you know, I would consider alternatives such as investing in cryptocurrency, maybe gold or even other fiat currencies, something that has a value not just in the United States, but all over the world. I mean, some people might even say ammunition. That's pretty much going to wrap up the video for today, guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.